This is the start of a journey bringing you the history of the African people from the beginning of time to the modern era. A TV series based on a unique project put together by UNESCO known as the General History of Africa. Africa's history written and told by Africans. Africa has the longest history of anywhere on earth because it is here that humankind originated. In the past, expert opinion was divided about this, but now the debate is closed. This is where it all began for us humans. And it was from Africa that we migrated to other parts of the world. In this program, I'll be following the trail of evidence on human evolution. East Africa's Rift Valley is where we begin. We evolved here over millions of years. Here in Tanzania, the landscape looks much like it would have done at the time of early humans, the contours of the land sculpted by volcanic eruptions. The Ngoro Ngoro crater behind me is the world's largest and most complete volcanic crater. Early humans and their ancestors have lived in its ecosystem for more than three million years. It's believed that a hunter-gatherer culture existed with tribes migrating in and out of the area as they have done until recent history. Across this dry riverbed, little more than 100 kilometres away from the Ngoro Ngoro crater, there exists a group of people who live by hunting and gathering their food from the wild, much as our ancestors did. They are the Hadzabe tribe and they live on the edge of Lake Iasi. I need a local guide, David Maragu, to take me, because this tribe lives in isolation from modern society and David has spent many years getting to know them. He's taking me into the bush to meet them. The Hadzabe are unique in that they are the only big game hunters left in the world who live purely from what they kill or find growing wild. They don't keep animals or grow food, and they move around to new hunting grounds every few weeks, building temporary shelter as they go. There are only about a thousand of them in all, and they live in small, autonomous communities. This is one of the more accessible groups. I'm keen to meet the Hadzabe because they hold valuable insights and provide many examples of how we humans have lived for most of our history. <laughs> they welcome me warmly and I'm immediately struck by the fact that the group meeting me are all male. The modern clothes, by the way, have been given by charities. They would normally be semi-naked, dressed in covers made from animal skins. And awesome just about sums up how I feel about meeting them. They hunt with bows and arrows, making their own weapons, and they start a fire in the traditional way. They don't have any matches to speed up the process. So, David, now I'm coming to say hello to the ladies. Yes. I'll let you go first. 
I forgot now you say hello already. <laughs> Hello. Mutana Mutana Aya. 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 So the men and women stay separately. The woman and the man sleep together, but the day is separate because oh. everybody is doing all different activities. This is nobako, which in the Hadzabe language means baobab, a fruit that's consumed widely across Africa. The women are so welcoming and don't seem to mind at all that I'm interrupting their craft making. I want to ask these ladies just how they spend their day. What is a typical day for them? <laughs> They bring collecting well, of fruit and by feeding with the kids. Mm -hmm. The women obviously are the gatherers, the foragers. So, I mean, what kind of things do they go and forage and gather? What do they eat? They're collecting, they're digging the roots, which is called shumoku. It's one who's getting from the ground. They have a lot of water and uh, have a lot of nutrition so they can eat fresh or they can cook. 